How's everybody doing today? Uh, today is September the 26th, 2021, and uh, we are truly blessed to be here uh, today. Uh, I am <coughs> extremely grateful uh, that we are have a chance to see each other. As I say, we see each other one more again, one more time. <laughs> Thank God we were able to uh, see um, one another, you know, those of you guys that are on uh, Facebook Live, uh, and on YouTube, and, and also the ones who are here present. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we wanted to um, say we have lessons three and four already printed. And if you want uh, three and four, you can. Right now, we just now started uh, lesson two last week. Um, so we still got a good portion of uh, lesson two to get through, through uh, before going to lesson three and four. But we already have them uh, printed, thank God. Uh, Sister Francis and, and the pastor working together and getting those those out for us. And, and thank you. Uh, thank you. We got them. We can go ahead and read ahead if you want to. Uh, the, uh, the disciples right here has a, has a copy of them now. I just gave it to them. And uh, we thank you for uh, being here. And uh, again, we can also give it to you on PDF. Uh, send it to you on PDF. You just put your email address or send me your email address. And I'll make sure you get a copy of it, or even call me, and then I can make sure I get a copy of it uh, to you for the lessons. Uh, so let's, uh, without further ado, uh, anybody want to pray us in for Sunday school? <laughs> Dear Lord, uh, bless all of us, help us to come together from the lesson that we learn to follow your way and obey your law that we learn to pass on your good wisdom to others. Teach us the guys that we learn to work together. That as we part of God's kingdom, all of us are here together to work for your behalf, white, black, brown. Teach us in a way that makes us more, <clears throat> more deserving, more loving. Help us forgive one another and work for one another and also be more be more receptive to what you're saying. Even though we don't always like it, but we know it's best for us. Change your hearts and change your minds. In all things we pray, amen. 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 All right, so uh, let's get started today. I know last week we ended, uh, Brother wanted to, uh, you wanted to talk about Judges a little more, right? You want us to go a little further in depth in Judges last week? You remember? You Thank remember? You. Last week you said you, yeah. You said last week you wanted us to talk about Judges a little more. I was talking about what, who were the judges? Why? Where did they come from? Mm -hmm. Is it a specious saying or saying? No, they were warriors. Right, right. Many of them were criminals. Right. They were resentful. Once they won a battle fighting someone else, the people of Jerusalem made them a hero, hero. As we call it. like we make basketball players or football sports are favorite mm -hmm. heroes mm -hmm. a hero for black mm -hmm. and that's because they was back they were saying that's what the right. judge is for right right um tony you want to add anything to that one also leads to what brother Leo was saying uh this is during a time when uh after Joshua died, there was a great problem with uh, confusion and, and, and rejection. The people didn't know where to go. So everybody was just kind of, you know, they wouldn't just depend on what God, but they wanted an earthly king or earthly leader. So that's why all these judges came up there, mm -hmm. from, from the confusion. Especially when Joshua was their, their main leader. It was like he had Moses, he had Joshua and all that. There was no main leader at that particular time. So. This kind of threw the people into a panic mode. Mm -hmm. So that's why all these judges start coming up to, to help the people until uh, to, you know, God finally sent the Jesus on the scene. And it's been a, it a long period, extremely long period, over 400 years. Right. Where all these judges come through here and there to save the people. Right. And, and like you said, it was 12 in particular ones that, uh, that he said rescued uh, Israel, right? And, um, they, and they were oppressors. Um, and then, like I said last week, they had some assassins in there. Um, there was some, some who doubted God. 
and also those who, you know, some men that have committed all kinds of sins, you know. Um, but at the end of this whole thing, they, they were all submissive to him, though. He was all submissive to our Father, and um, which, which helped in the end, which helped in the end. So, um, like I said, we just wanted to go reiterate that because I know a question came up last week on judges and explain a little, little more in depth on what those judges were and, and how they came about. Uh, but again, the, the importance of the book of uh, Judges is about when time, when, you know, it was changes that was going on at the time. It was changes that was going on. Pe Israel people had a central place uh, that they had to, to go pray, praise God. And um, so it was different tribes, different, different um, entities that, you know, that was just, that was there. They, they, they even talked about having three, it was like three tribes, right? Was that three tribes? Three groups, tribes of three groups, and um, and they fought for their lives. <laughs> and um, then they said it was again. It was six tribes that came together. Some of them just different, different tribes, right? Different tribes, different, different, different uh, religious laws, as it is now, right now. It's di it's, it's different tribes, as, it, as they call it. They, you know, we can say it's different tribes, you know, because we got Christianity, we got <laughs> baptism, <laughs> Baptist, and all the other things, right? Right, and that was one of the that was one of the major problems with with the judges. Like the, the twelve tribes, actually, none of them would really come together on any issue. Uh, the, on a few of them, they would fight battles, but other than that, they would stay pretty much separated. But it was odd because they were really fighting for the same cause, mm -hmm. but they never could get together. Like unlike something like today, right. We, all the different religious groups we fought be for the same God, but we can't never seem to get together on anything. Right. <laughs> There's all this constant confusion. Right. And the, also the problem with people that the judges had, they never would drive out the people in their land. Mm -hmm. They always end up selling with them, and then they end up being, uh, having problems or being taken <coughs> over by the people they both the land they've taken over. Mm -hmm. So it's, con it's always constant confusion. It basically comes down to not following what God told them to do. And that was the biggest thing. And that's what caused all the, the problems and pain. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest thing. So that leads us to right now where we are. You know, we, we're struggling with following what God is telling us to do, right? On the daily basis. Uh, but we're trying though, right? We are continuously trying to do the right thing. We're going to try to do the right thing. So well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started on um, the topic of what we got right now is uh, Naomi. Uh, so we're going to talk about her a little bit today um, but you know we see all kind of things that's going on in life today right you know we see we just had a five-year-old uh, that got that passed away well got shot unintentionally here here in Lexington and you know what about stuff that goes on people catching you know having cancer or whatsoever um, life hurts you know life life really does hurt sometimes um, just look now uh, COVID-19, he came into our lives, and it's hurt. It's touching somebody, somebody that we know, you know? It's touching somebody that we know. And, um, you know, we even talked about last, last week, is, is this a plague? You remember that? We talked about that last week. Is this a plague or something? We don't know. We don't know. You know, um, I think I read something this morning. Some, they were talking about COVID is the mark of the beast. I'm like, Everybody has their own thoughts on what COVID nineteen is, um, you know. It's, but it's making us do. It's making us change th the way we live every day, though, right? It's making us stay away from people. You know, we masked up. You know, it's making us do something different than, we, than what, what we normally uh, meant, to, meant to do. I mean, that we normally did in the past. So life does truly hurt sometimes. You know, um, even go through things with our family and friends, co-workers, and bosses that, you know, they put kind of pressure on you and, and, and you know, just, again, life is, is hurt and it's full of pain sometimes. It's full, of, it's full of pain. So why are we suffering? Is it because of the decisions that we make in our lives? Do we suffer because of the decisions that we make? What do y'all think?
mean, sometimes life, it's like a, it delivers a blow to you. You know, it takes your air out. Not just when people pass, but life in general, because of the decisions that we make in life, sometimes it's like a gut punch. <laughs> it's, it's like a gut punch. You, and you're trying to get your air back. And Have you ever been hit in the stomach and, and you was out of breath? Have you ever felt that? Where you just couldn't get it out and you couldn't, couldn't breathe? No, you, you felt, well, but Brother West, I know you, you fell off the horse once. Yes, it happened. A rooster, a rooster hit me in the belly one day. Oh, you said a rooster? Yeah, and he, I was like, he had a ticket. He was down back town in the hit house, in the hit house. My dad had some old uh, brick men stacked up there, and he was on top of brick men. He was yelling on me, and he jumped off. I was about 14, and he hit me right in the stomach. I was winning. <laughs> so you ate him. He paid for that stuff blow. He paid for that stuff blow. Um, <laughs> but you know, you know that feeling. If you think about it, that feeling, you just—I mean, you trying your best to breathe, and you just—you know, your stomach is just in knots. You know, life does that to us sometimes because of the decisions that we make. And um, you know, as we read last week in the, uh, in, in the first chapter of uh, Ruth. Um, try to put yourself in Naomi's place when we get to this, when we get to her. Um, because she had some desperate means of living. Uh, having lost hope, moved to despair, and also, you know, just experiencing the, uh, as what, they, what we call defeat. I mean, because we're going to see down in, the, down in the line right here, she first loses what? Who? Her husband. You know, and then on top of that, she ends up losing what? Both her sons. <laughs> and then she ends up taking up uh, Ruth and um, uh, Ruth and Opa. I mean, yeah, yeah, who? Opa. Oh, Oprah. Oh, yo, we say Oprah. Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, she ends up taking them, uh, taking them in. But you know, so it was during the time when I say that uh, men controlled everything and it's hard for a woman to make it by herself. By herself, right. So, you know, they was considered outcasts if they with no husband, no man to support them. So and she was in a distant land, so she had all these things working against her. Mm -hmm. Seemed like she had no way out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, with God is always a way out. Yep. Yep. You know, um, before we go ahead and look ahead on my homecoming. You know, again, we always said you can always go far off, um, but it's, you can always come back home. Don't think that you can never go back home. You know, you 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 you, you have a choice, um, but again, the choices that you make uh, makes the situations that you with, you're in. Um, so let's look at let's look at some of the predicaments of why Naomi was in these in this position in the first place. Uh, Elimah, uh, that was her husband. Whose name meant God is my my king, the king is my God. Decides to leave Bethlehem, Judah, and go to Moab. So who was and where is Moab? Anybody know where Moab is? Well, it's Jordan. It's Jordan. decision uh, will have a great ripple effect, as we can see uh, that we will see um, after he dies. You know, we always need to remember that the decisions that we make today will always show up in our consequences tomorrow. So the decisions that we make always will affect us in those consequences of tomorrow. So let's go to Genesis 19 and 30 and 38. And we'll see what Moab is. So Genesis 19, 30 and 38. Uh, we should have them, it's in, it's in yellow, y'all. Uh, should be on the first or the second page, I think. Third page. Should be page three. Um, who wants to take on the first two? Okay, I'll read first two. Genesis 19, uh, verses 30 and 31. Lot and his two daughters left Zohar and settled in the mountains, but he prayed to stay in Zohar. He and his two daughters lived in the cave. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, I found this old man, and there's no man around here to give a children. Custom all over the earth. Yeah, 
32. Let's, let's, let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. No. Was that right for them to do? No, no sir. No, sir. <laughs> well, that was a terrible situation. And, and you know, how people think. Their decisions will affect them, will affect everybody around them. You know, for her to think or for them to even think that this was okay to do was wrong. What in the world were they, were they, what were they thinking? They panicked and they think they don't understand and they asked her dad, and what would she, what we should do? And it seems like they lacked any faith in the Lord. They, because they talk to the Lord, they don't need to try to talk to the Lord and then wait for an answer or something. They didn't have any faith in God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any at all. They put themselves in a predicament where they couldn't get themselves out of it. They just made the whole situation worse. Because they didn't think that God was going to allow them to have a, a, a man, to, you know, as a husband, to, to be able to get them to bear any children, to, 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 to extend their family line. They took it upon themselves to do something as crazy as that, you know, for what we're about to see. Now, these are just two of the four daughters that they said that are unnamed in the Bible. But they did have one other, uh, they said was his daughter, and her name was, uh, uh, they lived in, in the book of Jasher. Uh, that her, daughter, his, her name was Pal, Paltit, Paltit. Um, so, but those, those two daughters that, that said out to do what they were gonna do, they were unnamed. You know, do, do, what does it say in Deuteronomy 7 and 3 and 4? Does anybody know what it says in Deuteronomy 20? Let's go to De De Deuteronomy 7, 3 and 4. Okay, Deuteronomy 7, verse 3 and 4. It said, 3, it said, Neither shall they make marriages with them, that daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter that thou shalt take unto thy son. Verse 4, for they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Right there. <laughs> right there is telling them where they were wrong at, right? In Deuteronomy 7, 7, 3 and 4, if you might want to highlight it, Deuteronomy 7, 3 and 4, it tells you right there. Thou shalt not make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall take unto thy son. That's that's crazy. You know, but is it happening? Does it happen? It's still happening today. It, it's still happening today. The problem was this during the time that there was a lot of idolatry, idolatry while they were worshiping other gods and and the other gods, they listen to what the people say that they can do this thing, it's all right. And they suffer because of that, you know, bad decisions. They follow what they think in their own mind, what's right. Right, right. And, you know, to, to even, for that to even be a forethought, like I said earlier, to, to be a forethought in their mind, all of this stuff is just, it's crazy for this stuff to be going on. And right there in, in Deuter Deuteronomy, it tells you that you ain't supposed to do none of that stuff. And, and But we still see it today where you see, uh, daughters and, and fathers are together and having kids and mothers and sons are having kids. That's, that's just, no, no. That's just, no, no, no. Um, verse 33 says, that night they got their father to drink wine and the older daughter went in and slept there. He was aware, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older daughter said to the younger, Last night I slept with my father. Let, let get, let's get him drunk. I mean, let's get him drink wine again tonight, or drunk, or as you want to call it. And you go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. What? What? <laughs> All because of the decisions that we make, we put ourselves in bad, worse situations. 
In verse 35, it says, So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. And again, he was not aware when she laid down or when she got up. And this was produces, this is what's going to happen as a result of that decision. The older daughter had a son, and she named him Mo. And he is the father of the Moabites today. Right? The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben Anna. Ammi, excuse me, Ben Ammi. And this father, and he is the father of Ammonites of today. Do you see how crazy that is? They both, wow, that's, and, and then what happens after that is that the sons did something that they weren't supposed to do. They end up taking up uh, uh, Moabite wives. So it's even more insensitive and greedy going on. And they don't, they don't even know where or what, what, what's really happening, what they're doing. And these are the Canaanites of modern day, the, what the Canaanites back in, these just people, and they all, you know, from disobedience and not follow God's law. Mm -hmm. And just to think, the incest and all that stuff started then. And I know I know y'all have heard some, some awful things in your in today's world where you you heard that brothers and sisters are together and, and married and having kids and you know, come on, come on. <laughs> but again, this was going on back then. That was going on back then. Said part is the one who needs to hear it never hears it. People of God hear it, but the one who you know to hear it, mm -hmm. the word of the team never get out to them. Right. So again, they took took on some Moabite wives. And and why was that wrong again? Because the Lord has said that you don't take foreign wives from the house of Moab. So they disobeyed him, right? That just made it even 10 times worse. They just made it even 10 times worse. Tony, can you, can you uh, start where this one is talking about the sons? And you can go to where it says Ruth, and then we'll go from there. Should be Malin and... Did you read about Ruth? No, this one right here. Just highlight it. All we know is that these two men, other than the names of their parents and wives, is what names mean sickly and unhealthy and weakly or puny. They both married more as women that the violation of what God had commanded. They both died and now Naomi had two daughters in law. But to get a clear picture of Naomi, Naomi, Ruth one and one, in the days when Judges Ruth, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah together with wife and two sons went to live for a while in the country of Lord. You know, as we as we read, I mean, as we read Ruth last week, um, she was one of the daughters, she was one of the daughters that loved uh, their mother-in-law. Nomi. Oh, you said Nomi? He said Naomi. He said, he said Naomi? <laughs> Modern, recently widowed, Ruth begged her to stay with, with uh, Naomi. Wherever, and told her, wherever you went, she was going to go. If you leave the homeland, I'm going to leave the homeland. And, and you know, Ruth 1 and 16, it says, Whether thou go, I will go. Where thou longest, lodge, lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. My God and thy God should be my God. So she agreed to let her go and they traveled to uh, Bethlehem. Not much is said about Naomi uh, except that she loved and cared for Ruth. Obviously, she was a powerful witness of God and Ruth was drawn to her. And as Deacon Tony said earlier, is that she 
you know, men, I mean, men ruled all, ruled the world back then, you know, in the country. So she really couldn't make it, you know, without nobody. She wasn't going to be alone, was she? And God wasn't going to let her be alone because he allowed Ruth to be with her. You know? So, so Ruth, Ruth played a big part of Naomi's life. In the midst of all of that difficult circumstances, she, she really stuck with it. So this is mother-in-law and daughter-in-law getting along. Mm -hmm. We always hear pictures and stories about they know they can't get along. Mm -hmm. But it shows you in some situations they can. And, and some get along with that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not always the case. That, you know, we always you know, think that that's it. But it just shows you it can be if you're willing to work for the same purpose. Trying to help each other out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we as we continue continue to read uh, the book of Ruth, um, we have to you know see that in Ruth, it's it's a book of encouragement, right? It, it, it is a, a a book of encouragement. You know, God used he as he uses used now, he uses you in the same way. Sometimes to bring family and friends together, right? So we are we are doing good. You know, we, we, we do have good in us. A lot of people think that we don't, but we do. Uh, but in, again, Naomi's her drama uh, that came out from her her husband, and then her the kids, I mean her sons, <laughs> taking on you know other wives that they weren't supposed to, mixed wives, mixed, you know, it was it was just crazy, crazy. Um, Sometimes I, I think we get in a hurry. God has set out certain things for us to do, and He has a plan. So sometimes we think the plan is working too slow, so we try to speed it up and mess it up. <laughs> and we just wait on what He has designed for us to do and follow that. But why should I wait? Yeah, and that's our problem. <laughs> and, you know, and just like this pandemic, the governor got up and said, you know, wear your mask and, uh, when it first started and, and don't congregate in large numbers. Well, what do they do? They still want to go out and have their uh, school parties or their neighborhood parties or whatever. And then they spread. And then the one thought, oh, When you already have a roadmap and you still do the opposite. Yeah. And you want everybody to feel sorry for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they all of them, most of them have been accused of doing that. But when it's already out there and we know what you can do and we're not doing it, it's up to us, man. Whether we want to heal or not heal. And the same way with, with the people. Uh, one point I want to make about this is that these people were, 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 were bitten by. That God wanted not to be cut. They didn't believe in God. Mm -hmm. They did the opposite of what God said. So He made the people forbidden for the people of God to not mix with people. Right. He know they get in people with trouble. Right. Right. Just like today, every time we go into the world and participate in the world, mm -hmm. it's hard for them to get back. Yeah. It's pretty much us to come back home to God. You know. Mm -hmm. So this is the important lesson: is that God is not concerned about the race or whatever. The the only one he can say about the ones who don't believe and don't accept him. Mm -hmm. That's the one he rejects and wants us to stay away from. And some cases talk about why? why? Why should we wait? Well, one thing, we don't think, a lot of us don't think about it, but because of the consequences that are going to take place if we don't wait. If we don't do it God's way, then we got to be accepted. Give the consequences. Wait on the Lord, you know, we just we're in the clear. But uh, we see uh, a lot of times a lot of us don't we don't have the patience to, to wait on the Lord. We go ahead and without futile plans, think that they're gonna be alright. Then, you know, down the road we hit with uh, uh, you know hurtful consequences. Again, it's it's the decisions that we make in you know in life is 
what ends up affecting us later on down the line. Again, the decisions we make today is going to make consequences for us tomorrow. And that's, that's just the truth of the matter. You know, we have to learn to, um, to trust God and, and, and allow him to work. But if we don't allow him to work, I mean, we're going to be lost. But we try to take it upon ourselves. As you said, Brother Freddie, we try to take it upon ourselves to do things and try to do it in our way and on our, on our own time. And we end up, you know, going in the wrong direction. And again, it's because we don't give, our, we don't fully give our trust to him. You know, God, God's going to make a way. We have to believe that God's going to make a way. We have to believe that God's going to make a way. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to move on to where it says uh, there's a famine in the land. You, are you guys there? It should be after um, Bethlehem and Judah. There was a famine in the land, and the famine may be seen as, uh, you know, with Naomi. Um, well, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back. I um, want to make sure we tie this in. Let me tell you, make sure we tie this in together. If God commands us not to do something, and we do it, we're breaking commandments, not just, not just uh, the ones that we, you know, the Ten Commandments, uh, if he commands us not to not to get involved with people who we know that are ungodly, why do we why do you why why do we do it anyway? If you see somebody that's ungodly, why would you mix with them? You know anybody? Sometimes we we see things that looks exciting. Uh, sometimes something that looks different draws our attention. <laughs> right. We meddle into it and see, you know, hey, what is this about? Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can get caught in stuff that you can't back out of. <laughs> right. You, you know, I, I had told my daughter one time, I said, man, oh no, no, it wasn't her. It was another. But you, you know, you um, my grandmother had said something to my mom one time. She had said, why do you like to my mom, she was like, why do you like bad dudes? <laughs> and my mom, my mom had said that, you know, that's the one I like to have fun with. They like to have fun. Right. You know, we attracted to, to somebody that's having fun. And we want to fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we choose to do things with bad people that's ungodly, that you know that are ungodly. It's not judging them. Go ahead, Tony. And there's some other thing we can say that yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we're stronger than what we are. A lot of times we're a lot weaker than what we actually are. And we barely can say ourselves. Right. <laughs> it, it, that's, what, that's the point that I'm getting at. So there's many different reasons why. But like you said, the fascination, uh, mm -hmm. thinking we can say, thinking it won't hurt this one time or whatever. But we see it always, like you said, there's consequences and, and, and actions for everything you do. And, and that's my, my point was those the two sons at the beginning of this whole thing, they wanted, you know, you, don't, you just don't know if they, even though they were commanded not to be around these ungodly people, they did it anyway because it was something, you know, probably fun. It was probably fun. And this is what we do. I just wanted to tie that back into what we, this is what's going on with us today. Is we know we ain't supposed to be around these people. You know, when you were younger growing up, your mom and dad tell you, don't be around these people. But your, your decision was, I'm going to do what I want to do anyway, especially when you got 18. Yeah. You know? But we do it. It's the same thing that they did. So we can't judge a book by its cover. Just because they did do something ungodly, they probably was thinking they were doing something right. Mm -hmm. You know? We're do, we, but we do it every single, not say we do it every day, but at some point in our lives, we do do it. We want to go out and and have the most fun with the, with the you know, with the, you know, with the best. What we see is the, the best people. So it's it's so easy to get to to get tied up with some ungodly things. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to get tied up with some ungodly things. You know. 
So when people realize that they're on the, on, they were doing some ungodly things, that's when we, that switch is supposed to turn back on us and say, listen, I need to go back home. It should be a little switch that says, hey, hey, wait a minute, no, this is wrong. I need to go back home. You know, so it's nothing wrong with failing and, and doing something that you know is wrong. You still got to, you, you know, you're, you're able to come back home. You're, you're able to be forgiven. That's my whole big point in this whole thing is that you can do wrong. They did wrong. But at some point, they could have turned their lives around if they wanted to do right by God. Give, your life, give yourself to Christ. Give yourself back to Christ. We don't have to stay stuck in and dug in in the dirt and the mud where you can't move and step out of it. That's my biggest point today is I want everybody to understand that you can know that you're doing wrong, but you can also know that God is a forgiving God. He's a forgiving God. But we, again, we don't know back in that time. It doesn't say if they repented or if they... It doesn't say anything about that. It is just said that they did do something that God told them not to do. So, uh, and then so, again, that's just one thing that we can get caught up in uh, as Christians. It's trying to, like Tony was talking about, sometimes we try to save people that's not, that, well, that don't want to be saved. They won't, don't want to be saved. Right. Right. But they don't want to be saved by us. But we mm -hmm. just keep on trying to uh, get them to where we are and they are not ready to come and we get caught up back where they are instead of moving forward where our blessing is. We can miss a blessing trying to save somebody that yeah. don't want to be saved yeah. at that particular time. Yeah. Yeah. And we got to realize that, hey, he wants to stay where he is or she wants to stay where she is. Move on. Mm -hmm. Pray for them, and maybe they'll catch up. <laughs> and if they don't, that's on them. But again, I don't. That's my boyfriend. That's my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to change them. I want them to be able to come to church. I heard this. I heard this. This, this just yesterday. Mm -hmm. I want to change this person. <laughs> yeah. I know. I want to change this. I want this person to be more like God. Mm -hmm. You can't make someone do something that they just not. They're not ready for. Yeah. You know. But it's their decision. It's not yours. It's not yours. It's their decision. You know, it's just, it's, it's their decision. You can't make anyone be of God or, yeah, go ahead, Tony. It's like an old narrative, you can take the horse to the water thing, whether he drinks it or not, it's him. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You, can, <laughs> you can lead him up to it and push his head down after the thing on drink. If you don't want to drink, mm -hmm. you're not going to drink it. And all of this mess that was going on, all of this drama in Naomi's life, it caused a famine in the, in the land. Why? Why do, you, why do you think it caused a famine? Why do, you, why do you think, or do you think, that what was going on with them and the stuff that they was going on and mixing this and mixing that and doing this and doing that, do you think that would cause a famine? Yeah, disobedience. It's disobedience. So it caused a, it caused a riffraff, you know, all just for one one man's decision to move caused all this trickle down effect. His decision to move caused all of this. It was, you know, it, it was crazy. So. Um, and now we can go ahead and go to where we were trying to tie in. Uh, there was famine in the land. And I just wanted to make sure all of that was tied in together. Uh, because the decisions that was made earlier, it caused famine in that land. In Genesis, oh, go ahead. And when we talk about famine, we're talking about some very food shortages. Mm -hmm. Like there's no plants or vegetables or food or meat or anything like that. And these people were in a panic mode because they were actually starving to death during the time. So they had to get out of the find somewhere where, where, they, where the food is more productive and where they can grow food at. So, so everybody was suffering. Everybody was suffering because of it. You know, let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 12 and 10. 
Genesis 12 and 10. Genesis, Genesis 12 and 10. It says, go ahead, you want to read, go ahead, Freddie? Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. They're just going to spare her life, yeah. right? Uh, They're going to spare her life. Um, that's all. That's all. I just wanted to read that portion. Um, it was severe, like Tony said. It was severe shortage of, of everything in in the in that land. Mm -hmm. You don't have to turn there. You don't have to turn here. But First Peter one. First Peter. 1 and 6 and 7. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now, if, a, if for a little while, you have to suffer, <laughs> you, now you have had to suffer various trials. In order to be genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tried by fire, may be found as a result of in praise, glory, and honor. So he said you're going to have to go through some things, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go through some things. They had to go through some fat in the land. Because as he said in 1 Peter, said, you're going to have to go through some things. <laughs> Before you get that gold, you're going to have to go through some trials and tribulations. And look at today, with the, all the floods and stuff, with wiping out people's houses, Jobs and stuff. They ain't got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. All over the world, Haiti, different countries, India, and all the Africa. These cause severe food shortages and water shortages, and, and the people that don't have nothing, what do you think is going to happen next? They're going to go away and come get it. Mm -hmm. Whether you offer or not, they're going to try to take it. So there take might it. be some major battles and wars going on because of these things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We take a lot of things for granted. Uh, and you can go to the health food store and they sell juniper berries. I got juniper bush in my yard, you know, red berries are falling off the ground. It's falling off the sidewalk and everything. And I don't know what juniper berries are good for, but they sell them, you know, at the health food store. And, So, as we see, um, the last part, of what I want everybody to look at is that we have we have to go through some things to be able to gain praise for God. So, if you was able to go through life without no trials and tribulations, how are you gonna praise God? Then? How would how would you, you know, uh, how can I say this? How would you? Um, trust that God is able to make this happen for you if you don't go through some things. You know? So trials and tribulations, we are going to go through. Some people say, I, I strive when when I'm going through trials and tribulations because it makes me a better person. And it, sometimes it does. You know, sometimes it does make you a better person because it gives you a better uh, forethought on, you know, God is, God is real. 
Do you know what God brought me through? That's what people don't really. Everybody heard said, do y'all know what God has brought me through? <laughs> so just, just to understand that we, that we all are here uh, for a reason. I think that we all are here for a reason. And um, God is going to take you through some things. And um, like one of, the, one of the biggest things, again, I want everybody to understand is that we go through some things, trust in God, give him, you know, the honor and glory and, and just trust in him. Just trust in him a little more. If it's not day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, at least give him some trust. Give him some trust. All right, guys, we're going to um, go ahead and end that for today for Sunday school. Uh, we're going to, um, let me see, Pastor Connor will be here next week along with y'all too. Uh, guys, he's going to be here tomorrow, uh, next Sunday. So he said he, he do want y'all the same places. We want y'all here on Sunday as well. Um, and I'll be out. So um, again, uh, we're going to st start on what is it? Chastisement and failure. So we'll probably pick pick back up on First Peter one uh, six and seven. We we'll probably pick, we'll pick up there next week. I'll get with Pastor and you guys let him know where we stopped at, and then we'll go from there. Uh, First Peter one and seven. You got it is in there, right? First Peter is in on the sheets. Okay, all right, all right. Um, uh, anybody want to pray us out? Guys, we're gonna um, see if we can play something. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.